Championship. Welcome, Ilya. Hello, everyone. Hi, Ethan. Hey, and I, I want to go quickly because um, Marco Polo's final table is about to start. I oh, think. they're starting. Great. So here, here it is. We're going to the game. And here we go. Game King is Ankush Kandelwan, and he's about to take his first pick. Very exciting. Okay. No, so let's see. Who would you take? I mean, I know a lot of people like the Mercator, they like Bert, yes. they like Niccolo and Marco Polo, but even Matteo Polo is not bad. But Rashid, people are not as big as big on these days, right? Let me see. You have to uh, take a close look on the board. I think the Mercator is always worth a pick, um, especially if Berke Khan is in the game, because usually then uh, the market is big quite often. So I think, yes, he took the Mercator. Okay. This uh, this is a clear first pick. That's true. Let me see. Yeah, that is cool. you. Oh, and um, Game King also has the best starting um, what is his contract, so that he can probably go oh, to. Wow. There we are. Yeah, he might go to Anxi in the first round with the contract. For them. This is quite strong. However, in Anxi there is a not that great of a bonus. Let's see what the others can do. Yeah, so he fulfills the contract and he gets a free movement. So you're suggesting that maybe he moves two to Moscow and plays the contract to get to Anxi? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, this is a quite common starting move. However, of course, he is um, in the last position. So probably somebody else will go to Moscow before hmm. and grab the five coins. Yes. But, what, who who yeah. would you take here? I mean, obviously, the, the, the selection of characters, it's, it's very board dependent. Who, who would you pick as second player here from these four? Usually, players? I would, yes, I would also pick Berk and Unzoom thinks the same. Okay. This is interesting because, he, um, oh, yeah, okay. I think this is very good for Game King because um, Berk will be the character who is usually the starting player in each round because he can um, well, do he very a lot of actions and yeah. he doesn't have to pay and if you can do a lot of actions you can just um, um, yeah you do your uh, do your steps later yeah so Berka Berka he can move he can travel last without paying coins That's yes part first in the in most rounds uh, and what about these players between Matteo Niccolo and Marco Polo who would you pick? Yeah. Surely no, not Rashid, I'm guessing. I'm guessing one of these two. One, well, there's a really interesting strategy. You could pick Rashid, and then go to Samarakanda and pick the um, free goat each round mm. with the six. You're, oh, wow. maybe. Okay, yes. that's, that's what he's doing. Maybe Ricardo will do this. Of course, this is much better if you. Um, if you have a card, um, a travel card, which um, includes a Marakanda, and you don't know yet, but we will see. This is a very interesting strategy, and it could work, because Kashka is also a strong city, of course, uh, with, the, um, with the bonus where you can choose right. whatever you like. Yeah, so if you travel this middle road. Yeah, indeed. Usually the middle road is... Uh, is not taken often. Okay, and Partimonium took takes the twins. I, I quite That's like interesting. The, the, the twins. You know, some people don't realize this, but with the twins, when you travel, you can move both of them within one travel action. So if you let's say buy, I don't know, three moves, you could split them moving one one of them two and the other moving one. So for example, in the first move with a just by paying um you know, 12 coins and two dice, you can get to Moscow and Alexandria at the same time with uh, Niccolo and Matteo. Yes, that should be a strategy. Usually Niccolo and Matteo go to Alexandria, and well, Alexandria is not a bad city here. You get a black dice, which is really good, and you have a money generator, which is one of the best ones. Oh, Just right, have to... you, right here, you mean, in Ormos. Oh, three, yeah. four, three. Which money generator are you talking about? I mean, the one in Alexandria, you can get uh, six coins and two points for a camel and a goat. Mm. 
And this is what you need if you want to go to uh, Adana and Kochi later, because of course you need money if you want to go to the southern route. To get through the 15 bridge. Yes. And maybe even to Sumatra. Sumatra is very strong here. Yeah. In Sumatra, you have the card um, which gives you two blue bonus uh, uh, two plus bonus cities every round. And you also get points for fulfilled contracts. Both are very strong cards, I guess. But of course, probably nobody will reach Sumatra before round four, I guess. Yeah, it's quite, quite a maybe this is late. destination. Um, wow. Okay. So very, very interesting. Uh, who, who do you think is the favorite to to win? <laughs> Oh, this is difficult. I think. Well, usually Game King has the best position, mm -hmm. and it will depend, of course, which uh, on the dice as well. But I think it will decide between Game King and uh, Sport R. Cool. By the way, let's just show people who, while they're picking their destination cards, who who these players are. So. Um, so Sport R is Ricardo Araujo, who, who's a, a great Portuguese player. And Anne Kush is Game King. And then we've got Monsen and Marchetto. Uh, one, uh, Marchetto is Pandemonium. And uh, Monsoon is Monsoon. So, <laughs> Mon <laughs> Mon Monsoon, obviously, a, a lot of rain. But uh, Monsen is, is his actual last name, very similar. So, so they're picking their, their destinations, which are secret. Other than the destinations, we'll be able to see everything. Uh, and look, very sportsmanlike. They're, they're, you know, already, they're telling each other to enjoy the game. And we've already got a lot of spectators. This is a very exciting uh, uh, table to watch. So it should be, should be really fun. <laughs> OK, so Pandemonium. Yeah, he starts to travel. But probably he'll. Well, where does he want to go with three steps? Oh, he's going directly to Anxi without stopping in Moscow. This is interesting. One, two, three. And Alexandria, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Always, always it's great to be able to split, to do the double movement. Uh, so he did pick up from Alexandria some, was it coins? What did he pick up? I oh, know camel. Yeah, uh, camel. what a black dye. Black dye. Black dye. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's where he has the black dye. That's great. Okay, Ricardo takes the camels, obviously. Yeah. So <laughs> Ricardo takes the camels, and he bought a black dye as well. Yes, this is very good for um yes this is very good for game king because now he can go to moscow and get the five coins i see i'm curious whether we will nobody, do this nobody's going to moscow before him well let's see let's see what happens oh he takes the pepper before Is that in order to fulfill uh, the contract? Yes, yes, of course. But I could imagine that Monsoon will go to Moscow now. Oh, maybe he doesn't want that. Maybe he will. Go, uh, he wants to travel later and become starting player, or even go to Alexandria and then with the three fives, where the gold, um, the gold travel. Action and then travel somewhere else. Okay, so they are playing very quickly, I think. Very <laughs> Much quick. enough time to, for us to analyze. Surprisingly quickly, there you, the most you can get is four minutes here, and they're all going over the four minute max. Let's see what Munson does. Oh yeah, it's nice to be able to just take the black dye. It's a yeah. <laughs> can 
you, you don't pay to take camels and then you actually get a die back. So that's very natural for, for Burke Khan there. So now as Game King, I would definitely travel to Moscow. Let's see. Or maybe it depends on his cards, of course. Maybe he also wants to fulfill the contract first, go to Alexandria and then travel to Adana. This is possible as well. This costs the same. No, he travels first, yes. Yeah. So he wants to take the northern route. Obviously, this is a game where sometimes you're when you compete with someone on a similar route, it becomes uh, more challenging. So it often depends on what what the destination cards of your opponents are. Yes, that's true. However, on the northern route, there are not that many city cards which you compete um, so tightly. The the card in Karakorum is interesting. But it gives a lot of money, but you won't use that very often. Probably you can use it once in the whole game for, I don't know, 32 money or so. And that's enough. So I think there's not much competition about this. Do you think that Game King may want to use this uh, to get lots of camels and, and take victory points this way with camels and peppers? No, I don't think so. <laughs> this is very expensive. Too expensive. You pay three camels for four points, and uh, you don't have some um, that much cam that many camels. <laughs> oh, now it will be interesting. Where will Ricardo go? Yes, he's going to Samarkand. You called it. You called it. The, the the ability to use the six to get three golds <laughs> is a tremendous uh, uh, power. Yeah. There. Yes, indeed. Mom. <laughs> Okay, the monsoon. The monsoon starts as well. Yes, now he goes to Moscow, but it's too late. He, he lost the five coins. Mm. But now he has three cameras left, so probably, yes, he can take the gold step and go to Anxi as well in, this, in the first round. This is good. Oh, yes, we talk about game king. He just performed his contract, which gave him movement, yes. And, and he got the Anxi, which is great to be, yeah. And, and he gets camels and coins all on the first round. That's terrific. Who do you think uh, is going to win the the contract? Uh, uh, most contracts is it going to be Game King or Cutter because he's going to get uh, free versus um, mm. coming his way, or what would you predict? Um, I think it's too early to decide. Usually, I think it should be Bear, um, Monsoon or Game King who will win the contracts, because for Ricardo, it's quite expensive to take that many contracts. He needs to pay for them, and he will generate a lot of gold, but with the gold, you can fulfill the expensive contracts, but not that many of them, probably. Yes, so, so I would rather think it will be uh, Mr. Ricardo. Yeah, you, you mean Sport R? Uh, Sport R. Maybe we'll maybe we'll use the names on the screen just to be. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. But yes, for Sport R, uh, even though he can get a lot of gold, it's still going to be challenging, as you say. Um, let's see. Yeah. Do you think that it's uh, in order to win the game, it's very important to get uh, most contracts? Mm, it helps, of course, but I think you can also win without the contracts. I think it's more important to fulfill the um, travel, uh, the travel aims, okay. the travel cards. So sport R. He's gonna if he's gonna keep going through this middle path. He needs more camels. Yes, he will need to. Take camel somewhere next round, probably. Mm. But well, he needs six of them, and yes, yeah, okay, he already has six. There we go. Yeah, but right. here we go. I'm also very curious who will be the first in Beijing because the ten, ten points there are, of course, not that bad as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think it won't be oh, pandemonium. The five, you know, the five uh, 
uh, three dice and, and the gold for the free movement and the three gold. That's, yeah, that's quite interesting. What do you make of that move for Munson? Yes, that's what I predicted. Um, he will do, that he will do that. Well, no, actually, all of them are, um, besides Port R, of course, have a very similar position. All of them are in Anxi. And what do they have? Let me take a look. Monsoon has three gold, but no camels and not a lot of money. Game King has just one gold. Maybe he will take contracts now. <coughs> okay, no, he's taking money. Huh. One, two, three, four. Interesting. <laughs> he's building up his cash to travel, presumably to Beijing, perhaps. <laughs> that could be. It depends on his cards whether he needs Karakorum or not. Maybe he will skip it. One, two, three, four. Now, one, two, three, four. Four movement to get to Beijing, which would be 18 coins. Oh, no, 12 coins, sorry, 12 coins. 12 coins if he's... It's cheap, cheap, right? If you get good value for four moves. It's the same cost as three moves. So. <laughs> yes, that's true. If it's possible, you don't want to travel three moves because it's not very efficient. Yeah. <laughs> So now spot R will, oh no, he will take the gold or the contracts. No, he's taking the contracts, interesting. That's cool. I mean, he'll also get, oh, I see, because you're right. He could have He could have used, uh, as you said, the six here and gotten three golds, but instead he's deciding to take contracts. I'm not sure whether this is good. I don't know. Maybe three still gold, it's three gold, yeah. Well, I guess the advantage here is he, he's going to be able to play, take the contracts, uh, you know, right now, at his leisure and get some camels or coins with it, whereas this isn't going anywhere. He can always do this next round, right? Yes, it's true. But actually, three gold are so good that maybe you want to do this action every turn. Every turn, yeah, it's possible. But of course, you need the contracts in order to um, to do the to convert the gold into points somehow. Because there's not a no card which can well beside Alexandria, there's no card which can convert gold in points for itself. By the way, yellow Sport Art took uh, camels, so he wanted he wants camels both I guess to buy dice and get through uh, the middle the middle route, the Samarkand. <laughs> yes. Monsen, okay. what's going on? Okay. Now we're already in the second round. Okay, Manzun is buying a die, just one. That's not good, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, he already got three camels as, um, what is it called in English? Uh, because his dice sum was not, uh, was below 15. Less than 15. So yes. We need to get some camels for it, but still unlucky to roll a one who picked up that die. Indeed, especially for his character, for Black Khan, it's really unlucky to um, mm. to have a such a low uh, dice count. Yeah, because obviously you want very high dice with Black Khan. You don't need to pay for them. That's right. He might he might decide to gamble and just uh, pay. Oh look, there you go. He's traveling already. What, what, okay, that's interesting. Okay. Really one resource in Karakorum. Yeah. Karakorum, he wanted the bonus, and and he did get it. Mm -hmm. He got gold. And I guess he's, he's just trying to go be as efficient as he can for the entire game, because obviously he doesn't need gold to fulfill the contract, but gold is the most precious resource, right? So that's why yes. he gets gold. <laughs> Usually, you can always find a contract where you can put a lot of gold into. Yes, Especially one. in this round, if you look on the contracts, there are <laughs> one, well, each oh. of them needs gold and most even need three or four gold. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff to put the gold into. Yeah, that'll be easy to spend. So 
So pandemonium, this is interesting. Obviously, he's got some really high dice here. These sixes are tremendous. If he could have enough money to, to, do, to make six moves, that would be pretty good. <laughs> Right, all he needs is 18 coins. He's not that far away from that. Um, That's true, but he does not only need those 18 coins, but also a lot of camels. And yes, well, where where should he go? Actually, I mean, for six moves. That's the question. Right? Maybe six moves. I don't know. I mean, one is to Beijing, obviously, right? Which would be one, two, three, four, and now I do either is camels or coins on, the, you know, on the way. Um, so these four there, and he could do two into Adana if he wanted. I don't know. Or maybe he wants to go to Ormuz, perhaps. Again, expensive, but if he could build build that up, that might be quite a tremendous uh, combo, perhaps. That could be. Actually, I could imagine that Pandemonium wants to skip Karakorum and go to Lansu directly. Hmm. Um, which gives him one extra travel move, and he can use it to go to Kashka, which is okay. a very strong bonus turn. That's true. But then you see, so you would, well, it depends what, obviously what he's got, but then he'd be giving up on the 10 points in Beijing. That's true. But I could imagine that he won't get them anyway, because um, it's Game win. King could get there instantly if he wants. <laughs> All right, so. We will see. We will see. Another two for Monsoon. And Monsoon is... Uh, got a two. These are low die. Unlucky. Absolutely. Very unlucky. So there is, yeah, obviously luck plays a big factor with dice, even though there's a lot more to it than luck. Okay, contracts for Game King. He's in no rush. He wants to, it's a, that's good use of the six. And he's obviously going to maximize getting the bonuses on, the, on these two contracts, it looks like. Probably. Really, yes. Oh, well, no. He, he wants the free move. So he took the top one, but then the free move. Um, oh, this is interesting. Actually, I don't like this contract because it just gives seven points for four gold. Mm. Mm, of course, it gives a free move, but there are much better contracts with. Um, which also gives some travel steps. I think it will be difficult to collect for gold for Game King. Yes, I agree. How is he going to get it? Unless he gets, yeah, I agree. It looks that's, that's a long way to go um, for him. Let's see. So perhaps that's a questionable choice. Who knows? Pandemonium is taking the pepper. Um, no, he took the money. I see. Oh, sorry. He took money. My bad. My bad. Yes, places dies and takes five points. So he wants the coins because he's getting ready to travel as well. Probably he wants to travel um, 45, 15 extra coins sometime <laughs> so that he comes to Kachi. But I don't think he will be able to do this in this round. Yeah. By the way, what do you think of his sport R? It's both Khan's favor, obviously, is good for him, but also placing a six to block out the other players, that's a quite a nice little uh, prophylactic strategy to make things awkward for his opponents, right, when it's good for him. Yes, this is what um, his character usually does. He just blocks this space for everyone so that nobody without a six can can enter there but actually this is also quite good for the mercator because if nobody takes the um mm. yes uh, the space on the left then more people will go to the market that's right it's quite funny how one character can feed into and help another character <laughs> yes mm. so monsoon what is going on here and with monsoon <laughs> what do you expect that uh, he's going to try and do? <sighs> yes, it's difficult. I think he cannot do a lot because the low um, well, everything is blocked. He needs, what does he need? He needs camels, obviously. 
um, in order to get anywhere at all. I think uh, he wants to travel once more in this round. Mm -hmm. Can he do that? Well, he has one camel, five money. I mean, it's tough because he's already mm -hmm. traveled once and he'd have to, if he were to travel again, he's going to have to use two black die. Um, and, and he would have to have lots of camels to either re-roll them and get better numbers. Because yes, a, a, a two move does nothing for him. He needs, he needs to get uh, really a three move. Okay, well, there we go. He's re-rolled and unlucky. He's and again, it's a two. Five, one to a two. <laughs> I think this was his strategy by buying the uh, two black dice so that if they were high enough, he could use them to get to, well, it depends, either Beijing or Lanzhou. Mm. But well, with two twos, you cannot do much. No, sorry. Yeah, so like no, he's take, taking <laughs> silk. Yeah. Taking silk. So at least he'll be close to fulfilling this contract once he gets some pepper and camels. Okay, Game King. What's going on with Game King? He has done Khan's favor. He wanted those camels. Uh, and he wanted a gold. I see. Maybe that's how he's going to get his golds. You said it's, he's got long, a lot of golds to go, as you said. Yeah, but it's just one. I mean, yeah. he needs a few more. <laughs> I think it, he will take a while until he can fulfill this contract, but maybe it's not a problem. Speaking of gold, Sport R, at some point, we expect... Whenever he wants, he'll be placing this round on summer content, taking three golds. Uh, yes, I'm sure he will do. Yeah, no, starting with, but with this. Is it a mistake? I mean, I guess the board is full, so there's no reason for him to do something else. Obviously, if there was space, he could have waited to do that later because it wasn't going anywhere. He's the only one who has that option. Um, That's true, but I don't see what else he could, um, he could have done. I think he wants to, maybe wants to travel to Kashgar in this round. But he needs nine money in order to do this. Let me see. He can get money from his contracts. Yes, this is exactly nine money. Wow. If he fulfills the and the right contract, which gives him seven money and nine points, yeah. then he will end up with nine then money then he'll use and the six die. camels. Yeah. Yes, this is perfect. Yes, and he'll have the two die. We'll make these two, so we only have to pay, as you say, seven plus two is nine uh, by putting two twos here. Uh, yes, that's it. That's wow. what he will do, definitely. Okay, so he's then he has he's one. All, he's all set. So he, he actually has an extra. He has an extra die. He can decide what he wants to do with because he only he's got everything he needs. Then he doesn't need yes. to do that. I think so too. Well, I, probably he will just take money with that die. I don't see anything else. Well, then that means. Surely he'll want to travel last, maybe. Then he would probably first put the one here to take four coins and then wait for people to move and be the last to move, probably. Yes, that's what he will try to do. But maybe Pandemonium can... No, he can't. Yes, Pandemonium will go before him. So probably Spot R will be the one who travels last in this round. Yeah. So Game King, what is going on here? Game King... Has placed some dice, activates the Grand Bazaar, it says, and canceled his move. So at first he took Pepper, but then he changed his mind. And now he's thinking. He's thinking. <laughs> I think he thinks about the same. He wants to travel last as well, but probably he realized that it's not possible because um, Spot R will always travel be um, behind him. So now he's thinking what else he can do. And obviously he'll never fulfill the dice contract when there's no dice available and he doesn't have the coins. So contracts will not be fulfilled this round for Game King. Yeah. Um, so what what else can he try and do here? I think he will re-roll one of the twos maybe mm -hmm. and then he just has to travel. Oh, I see. And so he actually he needs, I don't know if he, uh, wait a second, where is he? He's in Anxi, so Maybe he needs to go to Karakorum or not. This depends on his cards. Mm -hmm. If he wants to skip it, then he could just try to get another four and travel to, well, I don't know, Beijing or, oh, interesting. He takes money for the four, so probably he will 
travel the, with two two to Karakorum. Yes. Good call. So I think he had, he must have the card for Karakorum because otherwise, yeah, why would he stop? The city is not strong enough um, to mm -hmm. having to get there absolutely. So by the way. What the, was there any reason? Because he could have waited. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, and he could, there was no reason for him. A, does it make sense for him to just make that move for Game King? Because he obviously he could have. I ah, know. I guess he needed to do. That's the only. Oh, he needed the money to travel. Okay, so yes, yes, that makes sense. No, but he had a lot of money. He didn't need the money right now. He could have stalled if he wanted. That's true, but I think it um, it didn't make any difference at all because probably. Well, well yes, he could have traveled first and then let the, this four, uh, this one blue die open for whatever. Oh, but, 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 right. Right. Out, you were a hundred percent right, and and we know we you know, yellow sport R has gone for the six gold, and they've left their two dice, which as we said are going to be used. He's already prepared them as twos because he's going to travel next. Yes. Um, so to Kashgar after fulfilling the contract, which. It looks like, uh, um, yeah. So he'd already. Oh, I see. It. So he used his last die to to take money as we. As oh, sorry. We used it to take money. money left. That's yeah. a little because he already had this. That's right. So yes, exactly as we said. He used the die to take money, and then he traveled. Yeah. So well, now it's I'm interesting what he wants from Kashko. But he would. But didn't he have enough money? What happened there? Uh, didn't he get enough money by fulfilling the contract? He did, but I think he um, there just wasn't anything else which he could do with his last die, so he just took the money. Okay, I see. Yes, and he took camels from Kashka. I think this is a good decision because camels are the uh, mm. the lacking resource for him. That's quite a nice uh, thing to be able to to do that. Uh, you don't have to have a trading post; you can basically choose uh, anything you want. Right? That's a it gives you a lot of flexibility at the start of this bonus. Yes, of course, it's very strong. Very strong. Okay, so we're into the third round, and he is and his sport R is starting because he he moved last, like he wanted. What where, where should he go now? Well, let's see. what he had. He wanted to get if he needs to get to Lanzhou, you might think of trying to get there to pick up the free movement, perhaps. <laughs> But, well, yes, he will definitely go to Lanzhou. The question is just whether he will do something before that. I mean, the free movement in Lanzhou is not that strong for Sport R because it will just put him to the next oasis. Hmm. It is much stronger for somebody who comes from Karakorum and um, yes, yes, then yes, so that you can go to Kashka with the free movement. Here, all it gets you is to is is to here. Um, so yeah, it's not not that powerful. Pandemonium's thinking he had a low roll. It looks like. Uh, yes, it takes a camel and a, and one money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Monsoon has quite strong dice in this round. Yes, that is where Burka Khan wants to be. This is a half <laughs> can very very well compensated for a weak second round. Um, yes, kind of. But actually, I think Monsoon has almost lost this game already now. I cannot yeah. imagine that he will do well enough in the remaining rounds. Yeah, so being hurt, I guess, in the early rounds is much worse than being hurt at the end, right? Yes, it, definitely, because it, you're it, just uh, slower to reach the first cities and you don't get the bonus tiles. Yeah, it's, so. it's exponential growth. So. <laughs> Um, Sport R changes mm -hmm. dice. He's got a six. What's he going to do with that six? Obviously, he doesn't need to take this gold. He can do that anytime. He's got it. Yes, of course. Probably yeah. he will take camels. Or he could uh, obviously go over there. Or he's taking contracts. Okay, that's interesting because he's actually giving up. Uh, that's true. Potentially, I mean, a contract not necessarily the most efficient, but I guess he knows what he wants. He wants the two camels, and. Yeah. Uh, Actually, he could just fulfill the contract before taking the other ones. I don't know why he's, why he's doing this. Maybe he really wants to fulfill these contracts. It is a little strange. This could be. Yeah, or maybe he'll undo his move. Let's see. Isn't that important? Well, maybe. 
Yes, and now he's taking the extra step. Oh, I see. Yep. I mean, it helps him a little bit, but 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 better yet, it it, it prevents other people from using it. So rather than yes. him, it hurts his opponents. Now he has a good chance to be the first in Beijing. Actually, he needs two more um, two more actions, I guess. He will take gold in Samarkanda, oh. and he will take two camels and a silk in. Um, yeah, gold. That's right. On the oh, here's someone got to Beijing. Oh. That's Game King. He's going to Beijing right now. Yes, Game King took yeah. his chance to go to Beijing. And Lupin, by the way, a little bit lucky. You know, obviously, naturally, he's for kind of, he takes camels and got the dice. He rolled a six. So again, uh, maybe again, you're counting him out. But perhaps these high rolls might give him a little bit of a chance. But perhaps not. We shall see. But Game King is ready for for Beijing. Let's see. Um, oh, he's thinking. Yes. So he's in Beijing. Who knows? I wonder what his, uh, you know, his. He'll probably is. take the contract to get an extra black die. Oh, you mean buy a a, a black die? Maybe so even both. He can fulfill, fulfill his contract, contract now. Yes. Yes. And he has. And yeah. maybe he will buy even another one. Yes, he's doing that. Wow. wow, five, five, six. So here's the gold he's looking for. <laughs> oh, you think he's going to place three dice uh, to get a free movement? I think so. Wow. If one of the others don't prevent this by doing the same. <laughs> wow, OK. I guess it depends also what his travel cards is. Obviously, if he wants to get to Xi'an, then that's that's very nice. All right, so what's going on here? Sport R, he's got a six. Burke, okay, can's favor. And he's blocked it for the other players, which is nice. So yes. he's, he's making their life a little bit difficult. Yeah, so as I said, he got his silk, and then he will get the gold in the next round and travel to Beijing with his um, contract. Yes, not very nice, actually. So uh, probably he will be second there. Unless so well lined up. one of the others can do something before. That's right. But it's it's guaranteed, as you said. All he needs is a six on Samarkanda for three goals. And boom, this contact is fulfilled in a movement into Beijing. So very nice. Seven points, unless somebody else gets there. What else is he thinking about? Where is there, what Maybe are... he wants to. He's thinking about the last black die. He could buy it, I guess. But oh. then he doesn't have any camels left. Oh, no, no, because he needs... Oh, by the way, he doesn't have enough camels to get to Beijing at the moment anyway, because it's going to cost him two here. Ah, you're, you're here. absolutely right. He needs three more camels to go to Beijing. Yes. So he's taken he's taken the die. Uh, but now he's really short on camels. He's going to need five camels. <laughs> yes, it looks like he will need to take... Um, to take money and then probably camels on the camel field and then he's all right. But that could be too late to get a seven points in Beijing. We will see. Yes, that's a lot of turns. A lot of turns. It's funny. Maybe maybe he didn't play it the best. Maybe he shouldn't have bought, you know, um, the last time. The last die, and then he would have had a three and just traveled with two dice to get in, perhaps. Because he could have just used two dice to travel into Beijing rather than all this. Uh, That's true, but this is not a good action. I don't think he would do this. Um, actually, um, maybe he could have used the... Yeah, then use the oh, extra at the end. Maybe. I don't know. But okay, Game King, Game King here is taking some money. He's up to 13, and he passes. Okay, he just wanted a little bit of money. He used you. It's interesting, you know, like. Uh, mm -hmm. He didn't take the gold field. Okay, interesting. What? Well, the gold oh, that, it looks like he wants to go to Sumatra, because otherwise he wouldn't need the money now. That's right. Yes, for Z oh, Sumatra is, of course, not that great for him. Well, but he why, why can. Is that great for him. Let me see. 
Now, Sumatra is okay, but um, he cannot travel there actually, it, or it's very expensive. If he uses the black fives, then he has to overpay for, for the two steps. Yes. It that would right. cost, well, 12. Okay, he can okay. afford it. He would rather, it would be better not to have to pay five coins by putting this over here. Uh, so yeah, it's true. There are efficient theories. So maybe Game King will travel um, the five, five, six, taking three gold and one step to go to the oasis and then use his contract to go to Sumatra. No, he's, he lacks one camel. Oh, maybe I... he waits for someone to take camels. <laughs> he's the Mercator. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's see what people do. Yes, camels, you mean, in order to re-roll or to uh, improve the dice, change the dice? No, I mean, um, he needs five camels if he wants to go to Sumatra in this turn. He needs four for the um, oh, oh, I see. For the route to Sumatra and one more for the contract. You're right. You're right. Okay, gotcha. Pandemonium. He's re-rolling. Um, he got a six. That's nice. Nice. Yes. Yes. Hands favor. Oh, that's nice. And he's passed. Wow, that's lucky. All right, so another hands favor. <laughs> oh, we hear a little bit of background noise. There we go. Uh, Yeah, I'm hearing a little bit of background noise. Oh, from me? I'm sorry. Think. Ah, there you go. Cool. So Monsoon... Is it better now? Perfect. It's perfect, yeah. Okay. By the way, a lot of people watching. This is very exciting. I love how every, so many people can spectate. Uh, oh, indeed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one visitor. Eleven people. <laughs> cool. So Monsoon has fulfilled a contract. And he's taking some more contracts. You've counted him out, already, by the way, for the record. So we'll see what happens because of his weak second round due to low dice. Well, I would still think that he's just playing for the third place, but we'll see. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. We should mention whoever wins here will take first place. So victory points, I think, might affect other positions, but the actual overall winner is whoever wins this game in terms of gold. So Monsoon. He's passed. Game King. OK, so what's going on? So Game King took some money last time. Yes. No, he, did it. he did it. He's gone to. No, he's traveling to Xi'an. OK. Yeah, which you predicted. So he... uh... Yes, but actually, I thought he would go to Sumatra because I didn't see why he needs the money now. Hmm. But he was lucky. I could imagine that Monsoon or Spot R um, would, could have taken the spot before him. Is this, by the way, is that a mistake? I guess it isn't a mistake. I guess, well, because he could have blocked, he could have taken, what's he going to do with his last two? I don't know. You know, for Game King. For Game King? Yeah. Good like, maybe he didn't want to block the market because he wants people to come and give him stuff, but he could have, he could have taken Pepper or I don't know what. I will see. <laughs> I think he will use the two. Well, no. Maybe he will fulfill his contract and then just take new contracts with the two. This is possible. By the way, you were absolutely right about uh, Sport R here, yellow, playing every round he's going to go. Obviously, he didn't do it the first round, but every other round, now since round two, he's going to get three gold. So. Yes. And I would predict now his last two actions will be taking money with the one and then taking camels and traveling to Beijing. I've or maybe, maybe he could even take pepper instead of the money. So to travel to Beijing, to be precise, he's going to need um, five camels because two for the yes. contract and three here. So he needs three more camels 
And obviously, he can take three camels by paying coin by paying uh, coins by going going here in the market, and uh, and that's how he can do that. That's true. He could just take three of them. Or maybe he will take money for uh, some kind of money, either through Pepper with uh, with a five. He will he would get two money out of this and and three Pepper, which is quite good. Um, and then he can take six camels at oh, once, which right. I think is a little bit better than just put a three there. But yes, it yes. depends. Yes, I see what you mean. To, in order for the money, yes. In order instead of getting four coins going here with a one, you can get coins here by taking Pepper. Yes, indeed. Because usually one camel is just worth a little bit more than one money. That's right. That's quite nice. And then, and then I guess you would play the six and take six camels. Then is that how you would do it? Yes, that's what I would do. Yeah, most efficient, indeed. Cool. Okay. Well, we've got we got Criello. We'll come back and see what happens with him. Monsoon is. Monsoon looks a little bit desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So he, he, well, he got, he seem... Maybe he's going to go to Beijing, perhaps. <laughs> yes, it looks looks like that. Yeah, you know, seven points. For Twelve. Yes, <laughs> he's going to Beijing. Okay. But the problem with this move is mm -hmm. now he cannot take a silk and go to to Xi'an in this round with his contract, that would have been really good because it's worth three extra points. But I don't see how he could get a silk and a camel. No, it's not possible. So I was just checking that everything looks good on the stream, and indeed it does. The stream is healthy. Hello. Great. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying this. How um, many people are watching us, do you know? I don't know. And we've got, it's, it's multiple channels. We're doing it on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. So, and actually even on our Twitter through Periscope. So the four channels. <laughs> and a lot of you are actually also after the fact as well. So hold on, so let's see. So at the moment, we're back to yellow. We already predicted yellow strategy. So uh, a four. So you okay. didn't put the six camels through the pepper. He's happy with just four, or is he going to change? Yes. So I wonder what he wants to do with, with this last one. I'm not sure about this. Maybe money. Or with, with or the last time. Pepper. Probably, yes. Yeah. But I mean, if he wants to go to Pepper, he should have done this before. OK, but nobody, oh, Pandemonium could, go, could still get there. But I think he will travel, yes. Monium is traveling to Kashka, okay. So this is interesting. Yes, obviously Pandemonium doesn't want to go to Beijing anymore at all because he just would get there one point. That's not much. But still, Kashka is of it's quite strong, of course, but maybe he should have gone to, to Lanzhou and Kochi instead of this. Hmm. Because he can split up, he could have split up his four movements for one more city. Yes. What's he going to do? The last dice, just money. Okay. Why, why would he do that and not take uh, four by placing a one here? No idea. I think this was a mistake. He should have taken um, the pepper for two money. Uh, so three pepper and two money instead of just one money more. Yeah, that seems crazy. Okay. Yes. Well, well, of course, maybe he didn't want to give Game King anything. And maybe he had already played a, a yellow coin to get five. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we forgot that it was stacked. Right? Not uh, that's true. Uh, he could not have taken five money. That was not possible because he didn't have any money at all. But he can change oh, a one to a five because yeah. he is uh, he's yeah. Russian. Yes. And just take three pepper and two money. Yes, okay, this gives one pepper to Game King, but I'm not sure if this is really that crucial. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to help Game King. And that's a very good point. I forgot that he was on zero money, so he couldn't have played the one here. Very good point. Wow. Okay. So Game King. 
Oh, Game King has rolled low. quite low this time, but maybe it's not that much of a problem in this I late in the game. Yeah. Depends where he needs to go. Pandemonium, how do you think Pandemonium is doing? Yeah, somehow we lost him a little bit, but I think he has a lot of money and a lot of cameras, so he definitely wants to go to Kochi. He just needs to go there, um, and maybe even to Sumatra afterwards. Mm -hmm. oh, However, um, there is no contract which gives him a free step. This is, okay, he doesn't have any resources anyway. So I wonder whether he will reach Sumatra at all. Mm. And maybe he will, but in round five, and this is quite, quite late, of course. Yeah. So, interesting. Sport R, he's got that six ready to go. <laughs> Where is it going to go? To contracts, perhaps? I don't oh. know, he takes... He's takes decided to block, uh, block Ken's favor? Interesting. Yes. And he's, he's taking a die. We can also take a look on the points, actually. Now, um, Spot R has 27 points already, which is quite a good lead over the others. Yes. Um, however, Game King has four gold in space. Well, he will use them for a contract, making 19 points. OK, Game King is traveling to Kochi. Nice. And now he's going to Sumatra. Yes, there he is. That is a very powerful move. Um, yeah, now he's in Sumatra. And what does he have? He has a 1 3 4. King traveled to Kochi, and then he fulfilled a contract that gave him an extra move into Sumatra. And that's, that's a big play for Game King. Yes, that's true. And now he can use his dice in, Zum in Sumatra for, um, I don't know, probably two resources and three points. Uh, if he manages to get a five, okay, he doesn't have a five, maybe he needs to reroll. Possibly, yeah, in order to, to get the double bonus here in action. One interesting aspect is um, also who will be able to put all of the, um, all of the houses on the board because this gives five or even 15 extra points. Yes. I mean, this is something that's quite easy usually for Niccolo and Matteo, the twins, to do with a double movement. So we could expect them to surely lay down all of their, their houses, their, their trading posts. Yes, they have, they have the easiest task to do that. However, his um, pandemonium needs four more houses to put and well, how many steps are this? He needs probably two travel steps to Kochi and Clan Zhu. And then, where can he go? Be Beijing and Sumatra, maybe? Or Xi'an and Sumatra? I don't know. What is interesting is Game King has put seven houses now, but he's stuck in Sumatra. I think he will not travel anywhere at all now because every step is very expensive. And he has built a house everywhere around Sumatra. So in Beijing, in Xi'an and in Kochi. Yes. So probably he won't get the extra points. No. It's five points obviously for laying down eight. Uh, but yeah, as you say, he's got a long way to go to get there, you need to get to Lanzhou or, or, or something like that. So, or maybe to Adana, but that's very expensive. So yes, yeah. 25. No, I don't think he can afford to pay 25. No. Or five move into Karachi or something like that, but, or one, two, yeah, one, two four, four, Lanzhou, four. Four to Lanzhou. I think it's too expensive actually. It doesn't make sense. He's just going to use what he's got. I think he will not tr just try to maximize points offered contracts and uh, taking the point cards in Sumatra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. 
obviously it's very nice to be able to get a victory point for every contract fulfilled and he's already fulfilled three so this is an easy way to get some victory points we can imagine that he will use this three die here uh, on this turn perhaps i don't know yeah three victory points for a die that's a die, one dice is not bad Okay, what is Bot R doing now? Uh, he's in Beijing, so probably he wants to go to Duxian sometime. Mm -hmm. And then either to Karachi or to, to Kochi. Oh, he's blocked. Uh, well, it was already blocked. One more space, yeah. He's blocked <laughs> for more camels. Uh, Just like taking that. more resources. I guess he really doesn't want to help Anka. She's afraid to use the market. Yes, it looks so. Wow. <laughs> so competitive. Oh, Ilya, hold the floor for one second. I'll be back in, in, in two minutes. You, but That's please fine. keep commentating. <laughs> okay. So now it's Game King's turn. He has one, two, three, four. I think he will use two dice to go to Sumatra, and now he's thinking what to do with the other two. So taking contracts is a possibility, definitely. I think he needs contracts this turn. Maybe he also needs some money. Yes, maybe just taking money now is a good idea. Yes, he's taking money. This is nice. So let's look on Pandemonium. 29 money, wow. That's really a lot. So yeah. But he's really lacking resources for his contracts. He needs gold. At least two gold, maybe, and also some silk. But the favor of the count is always blocked by spot R, so he doesn't get the cheap resources from there. <laughs> okay, so he's taking pepper. This is the only resource he doesn't need. Another one for Monsoon. It didn't pay out. Ah, oh, now he has a five. That's better. What is he going to do with the five? Probably he wants to fulfill the contract to go to Xi'an and then do another travel step. Maybe two. Karachi. Oh no, he travels before. Where does he go? To Kashka? Not to Lanzu. Oh, interesting. I wouldn't have done that. Why? Why? Probably he... What's the rush in doing that? Well, I only can imagine that he has a, um, a travel card which aims to Lanzu and maybe even Kashka. Yes. Yes. But not to Xian. This is the only explanation well yes obviously yes. he's not a travel uh, contract but he could you know he, there was no rush he could have done that the next move as well uh, interesting yes that's true i don't think that was a very good idea to go there now so actually monsoon is at five houses now as well so maybe he will definitely place a sixth one in kashka but i think that was it, so he won't be able to get the extra points as well. Mm. And now it's really interesting about the contracts. They didn't fulfill a lot of contracts yet, 
So Sport R is currently leading with four contracts, which is not a lot at all. Yes, whoever whoever gets most contracts, I believe gets is it seven uh, victory points? Yes, seven extra points. So quite quite useful. Um, what do you think Game King is going to do? Is he going to play a play something in Sumatra? You mean Game King? Yeah. Um, well, I think he would want to reroll the die, or maybe even just put him. Oh, okay, he's taking contracts first. Yes, that's a possibility. <laughs> Well, as you said, the the race for the most contracts is is very close. So if he can win it, that would be tremendous for him. Yes, but it just starts now, I guess. I think Game King won't do anything besides uh, fulfilling contracts now, and mm. the same might be for uh, for Sport R as well. Well, no, he will still go to Xian, I guess. I mean, these are six points in Xi'an if he manages to get there this round. Pandemonium <laughs> just took some money. Sport R, what, what's Sport R gonna, gonna do now? Oh, wow, he wants those coins. He also needs money, where does he want to go? <laughs> He's got a lot of coins, he's gonna go far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems so, but... I don't see where he wants to go with 21 points, uh, 21 coins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so now Monsoon is in. Oh, that was not a good idea. I think he has to mm. take it back because he lacks camels. <laughs> he has to take camels first and then he can fulfill the contract. Yes, he's, he's, he's taken that back. So, yeah, so you think he's going to go to the market and get some camels? I think he cannot because you already were there. Ah, oh, he can't. You're right. He's already been, and there's no black dice. Yep. So I think there's no way for him to get any cameras at all. Oh, this hurts. That does really hurt. Ouch. What can he do? <laughs> Just crying. <laughs> oh wow. Ouch. Well, no idea. I mean, he. Could no, there's no way to get two camels. Yeah, because he needs to get, as you say, to get to Kashgar, he needs four camels and he only has two. He needs to pay two uh, to take the route and two to fulfill yeah. the contract. Although, wait a second, he could potentially just use the two dice and move one, travel one. Ah, no, he's already traveled with the two dice. Ah, so he can't travel again. Yes. Oh, ouch. Yeah, okay, he, he could indeed. That's what I meant that it was, it seemed uncomfortable. Why was he, you, you, you shouldn't have been in any rush. Again, I'm not sure that would have mattered actually. Um, I'm not sure like if he had had a previous move, instead of traveling the previous move, what he could have done that would have been better, but it does seem yes. stuck. I think he just forgot that he, that he lacks some camels and now he has to change his strategy. Yeah, he's taking, <coughs> taking Pepper. Okay, so Game King. Game King just takes one in the small bonus in Sumatra. Okay, he didn't want to reroll, and uh, yeah, I would have I would have gambled, but maybe he doesn't need that. He's not. Ankush often does gamble. He is a poker <laughs> bird, but I guess he didn't like the odds. So um, he could still change his mind. Obviously, he's still got a lot of time to think about it. I mean, what are the odds of getting a, you know, a, a third, right? If he were to reroll the dice, the odds of getting a five or a six, the one out of three, those are not great odds. He does have. Yes, it's true, but he could he could just um, yeah, move could the two. move the four up so that he yeah. has a five. He could pay two camels to make that. Yes, He's very sensible. Well, but maybe he just wants to spare the four to get four points out of the contract, which is good as well. Oh yes, that's very nice actually. That makes sense as well. Maybe. Very efficient. Then he, yeah, four points is better than three points, which he would get from Xian if uh, he can take two bonus tests in Sumatra instead of one. Traveler is traveling last? No, I'm not sure. I think Pandemonium will travel last. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. My bad. Okay, so he's gotten to Karachi. Surely he needed that, and he did get a little bit, he got some. Points. Oh, he's, he skipped Xian and just goes directly to Karachi. Wow. 
Interesting. Must Absolutely. Be I mean, these are six points in Sion. I wonder why he would do that. That is a little bit odd. Perhaps he, he really needs to get somewhere, but that, that is odd. Yeah, probably he still I'm needs to go almost. Just it's gone very quickly. As predicted, he has placed the four and taken four victory points using the contract. So he's he's playing well in Sumatra now. Yes. Okay, so now round four is finished and we're going to the final round. Okay, we can see that they're thinking about their bonuses. This is this is very critical phase. Okay, so Panemonium is at seven houses now. Where is he? He's in Kochi and in Lanzu. No, in, in Samarkanda, okay. That's right. So if he wanted to lay down two houses in this move, uh, really the way to oh, do it would probably be- Difficult. It is difficult. Maybe to go to Xi'an and, uh, and Ormuz, something like that. Yeah, but these are five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's, oh, yes, it's about the same if he goes to Sumatra and almost. I think he five. won't manage it. He did roll the six. He has the six and a five. So he could potentially, but he'd need a lot of coins in order yes. to do that. Um, he can generate the points from Alexandria. That's possible. Yeah, right here. But I wonder if it's oh, worth I'm it. Okay, another six. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Okay, so first he's fulfilling the contracts. That makes sense. Maybe he just fulfills the contracts and then takes some new ones because in this round, the contracts will be very, very popular, of course. Okay. Everybody wants to fulfill as many contracts as possible in this round. That's right. And actually, Game King leads in terms of contracts fulfilled at the moment. Yes, it's four, four, three, one. Okay, so nothing decided yet. No. But Game King has most resources now, although Pandemonium has actually most resources left, but he Pandemonium just has one contract. Pandemonium only has one contract, so he's out of the contract. Yeah, he is probably out, that's true. Even if he will fulfill both of them now, well, then he's at three as well. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, interesting. If they are, you mean using? I don't think he will manage to uh, to get the majority in contracts, but it's not that far away as it looks like. Very low contract gain, all in all. You yes, know, we, we, there's, there's been a lot more travel going on this time. This is really strange because actually they don't have many contracts and also not that many travel because beside of pandemonium, nobody has the chance to um, to place all of his houses. Yes, that's right. Because Game King, as you said, he's not going to bother. Yes, Game King won't do that. And I think okay. the others just have too many houses <laughs> left. has taken the contracts. Maybe he is eyeing going yes. to five contracts. Wow. OK, but now he needs, what does he need? A lot of pepper and one gold, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because he's got the silk and he's got the camels. This is a little bit bad luck now because there's no, there are almost no contracts in this round which need some any gold. So this is bad for for spot R actually. Yeah, because he's so able yeah, to generate the gold on summer conda. Huh. Even though yes. Pandemonium can compete with him now. Yes, it's true. Maybe he has to take the three gold now. But I think he won't do this because, as I said, there are no contracts which need gold now. So the gold is quite worthless for him. Yes. That's right. So what does he do? Well, I think now he just needs to um, to fulfill his uh, travel bonus cards. Hmm. And what uh, I don't know what he has, obviously. But uh, I don't remember. There is a card for Karachi and Kashka, I think. I mean, it might be worth taking some contracts for him, right? Because he still has a chance to... That's true, but uh, well, now the contract space is already taken, so this won't run away, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Even if all contracts are taken, there will always be two new, 
uh, contracts as, as soon as um, the space is completely empty. So you don't run out of contracts completely. That's true. But obviously, if he, wanted to take resources, he doesn't know what resources to take. I mean, he can take complementary resources to what he has. <laughs> yes. Maybe it's a good idea to take Pepper now. Mm. Yes. Or the favor of the Khan and just wait. I see. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Wow. Well, I would think now that. Um, oh, pandemonium is really interesting. If if he manages to put two more houses, although I don't see how he will do this, yeah. I think he can really compete. If he gets the six, he uses the six and the five, he gets five movements. He just needs all the coins, which he can generate through Alexandria, as you said. And then, you know, he gets, this guy goes to Zian, and, and the other one goes into Armour, surely, I think. But we'll see. Yes, yeah, but he also needs seven camels just for this movement. By the way, look at Sport R. Huge uh, move. He's thinking a lot. He knows that something big is about to happen. He's got the four and the six. What is the four for? <laughs> four can be for the contracts. This yeah. is the only space which yeah. makes sense here. Yeah. So maybe he is eyeing them. Maybe he wants yeah. to know what, what contracts he has before he takes resources. Yeah. Probably he wants the. Oh, okay. Interesting. I would have taken the first contract, which needs gold, because yeah. he wants to, to get rid of that gold, maybe. I agree. But okay, these were the two cheapest ones. So probably he tries to compete for the contract majority. Yeah. All right. There we go. Monsoon has fulfilled the contract. He wants most contracts as well. Um, very exciting to have such a race at the end. Yes, it's very close. <laughs> to, uh, considering the country. You're still counting out Monsoon at the moment. You don't think he, he's in it for first. You, you think. I still don't think so, yes. Um, with, well, and what are the cities he has? He has Moscow, Anxi, Karakorum, seven points in Beijing, Lanzhou, and that's it, I guess, yes. I think there are no contract, uh, no travel cards, which would allow him to take many, uh, many points out of the cities. Yeah. So yes. I think he, yes, he won't fulfill more than one travel card like this. He's finally gone to Kashgar. So. <laughs> yes, no, he's there. Of course, he wanted to be there last turn, actually. That's right. And he has used Ken's favor with a low one. <laughs> Fine, finally, he is able to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. what we'll get? Yes, Gangping is take, taking the next contracts. Yeah, I think this is very interesting because these contracts can lead to more contracts automatically. Um, yes. But he needs really pepper and silk. Well, yes, you can generate them. He's, yeah, so he's almost, this contract's almost fulfilled, just one more pepper. Um, and a silk. No, two more pepper and... No, 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 he needs one silk. No. And he's got three for one of them. The other one he needs is silk. You're right. Ah, yeah, that's true. So, okay. so one, one's, you know, both, both of these contracts are very much within his, you know, within... Yes, his, I think he can... Um, he can put one of his fives into Sumatra, then he gets two resources out of this, which will be silk and pepper, probably. Mm, such a powerful range of options in Sumatra. Really, yes. really terrific. And he also gets one of the fives can be, well, the six, actually. Sorry, one of the fives might be for vic five victory points here. If you probably, want. yeah. yeah. So, so I predict Game King will get these two contracts, maybe even one more. So um, what what will be here? Pandemonium has taken Pepper while we spoke, uh, which makes oh, yeah. so uh, he's ready to. That makes absolutely sense. Yeah, which obviously is good for Game King as well, right? Because he does get Pepper from that. Ah, indeed, yeah. I just wondered where the fourth Pepper at Game King uh, <laughs> appeared yeah. from. Yeah. Yes, of course. The yeah. 
Okay, Sport R is taking one more contract. The travel, the traveling one, obviously. <laughs> I think he wants to, he still needs to get to almost probably. Well, there it is. That will be, that should be easy to achieve to get the, the two, um, the two pepper. Yes, that's not a problem. Yeah. Mind you, he does need five camels to do it. And he's only got three because he's going to need to pay two here for the contract and two for the road. So he's still going to have to take a little bit of some camels. Yes, maybe the camels are still open. Maybe he will even get there without paying. Yeah, that's right. Could be... OK, so my prediction now is that Game King will win this game. He's fulfilled a contract and drawn a contract by fulfilling. So he had a contract that gave him a contract. Um, which is great. So now you say he's going to win because uh, obviously he's going to, it looks like he's leading the race for most contracts, but he still needs, it's not. Actually, I think he will win the game and no matter whether he will get the most contracts or not. And I think he will because he has 10 extra points in Beijing. He's leading by points now. He will get five more points from Sumatra. And he has placed seven houses, so probably he has also fulfilled quite a lot of his travel targets. Yeah. Okay, so he's taken resources and camels. This is to fulfill <laughs> a contract as well, I guess. Um, but yes, as you yeah. say, you will put the five toward one of his last moves here for five victory points. He can obviously get some resources um, here in Sumatra as well. <laughs> So yeah, probably he will use one five or or the four to get pepper so that these contracts are fulfilled as well, and then he will draw one more contract from the um, from the six points contract, mm -hmm. and if he's lucky, maybe he can even achieve this one. Although this will be quite difficult. So pandemonium has has actually placed the six and gone for the three gold, which is interesting because obviously. He's not going to use it for contracts. All it gives him, I guess, are the victory points through Beijing at the end. No, I'm not sure because now there's one more contract. Oh, sorry. Um, it's a good which contract. needs gold. My bad. Sorry. It's come out any good. That's yes, good. it just came out. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so he is. But he needs one more gold to, uh, in order to fulfill this. And it doesn't have one. So I think it will be a close race now between Pandemonium and Sport R for the second place. Okay, well, Game King is back, back in action with four dice to go. Nice dice as well. Yes, five, 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 four. <laughs> yes, he's taking Pepper as predicted. Yeah, he's, he's, he's ready to fulfill contracts. So now I think two of his dice are already uh, reserved for the two city cards in Sumatra. And That's right. the question is just what to do with the last four. That's right. OK, so the last contract he drew uh, needs gold, gold, and pepper. OK, he needs six resources, and he has three of them now. He can get two more from Sumatra. Yeah, I don't know if that's, I think it's going to be hard to fulfill both of those contracts for him. I think it's possible. But he might have to give up a dice, though. So we'll see. Mm. Uh, the gold is the problem, I think. Yeah. So Pandemonium is just taking money first. OK. If Pandemonium wants the 10 money in order to get to Sumatra now with his um, contract. Yes. Ah, this is interesting. And he will maybe compete with game king in sumatra for one of the actions wow that's always going to make uh, uh game king think about what <laughs> which action to do. what is more important for him indeed yes and sport r well okay, he sport r needs some more pepper obviously so maybe he'll just take pepper yeah, it's not enough money for four peppers, so I think he first needs money somewhere. Yes. 
So maybe he just places a one to get four four coins, perhaps. Ah, uh, he doesn't need four pepper. He just needs three because he wow. will get one pepper out of the left uh, contract. Yes, indeed, that's that's correct. Yes, he played before. There you go. That's right. That's right. Because all he needed was four pepper. So boom, it's done. Um, yes, and now he will fulfill both contracts and travel to Ormos. That's right, because this contract gives him resources that he got to choose in order to fulfill the second contract. Exactly. And he has enough camels to get to Ormus. So, so there it is. Yes, but uh, OK, so now he's gone with this action. And I think now he cannot do anything else at all. So now he will just take, I don't know, money or so with the last actions. Mm. Okay, so Monsoon takes the last contract and not Pandemonium. This is interesting, but yes, of course, he can fulfill it. Three gold and two pepper are necessary. He just needs one more pepper. Yes. Which will be easy for him to get. Game King, okay. Yes, Game King is taking the bonus. And so good. now he is probably, yes, he won't get the five points from the contract cards, probably. I think. Um, Pandemonium is going to take this now. OK, so he's taken a three victory points, and uh, and he gets to choose another bonus. And the other bonus was, oh, yeah, he chose the, uh, the, the resources, yes, and uh, three points, exactly. So he's ready He's ready for, to fulfill the five contract, the contract that gives five victory points, but unfortunately, no dice uh, at the end. Yeah. Oh, actually, he's ready to fulfill both of them. Yes. Oh, Two yeah. gold. Both. Yes, yes. Both. Yeah. He has everything he needs for both contracts. Yeah. So now he's, he will have nine contracts. OK, what is Pandemonium doing? OK, he doesn't go to Sumatra. Why? Why doesn't he do this? He goes to Xi'an and Beijing. I mean, Beijing is so, uh, it doesn't fall anything. It's one point. Mm. But OK, now he has placed nine, uh, all of his nine houses. That's true, of course. That's he ten. wouldn't have been able to do this in Sumatra. That's 10 points. So that will get him get him already to 61. Obviously, those victory points will only be added up at the end. Um, no, they are already added. Uh, oh, did they already add the yes. points for the, the ninth trading point? Yeah. Oh? Yes. Oh, OK, cool. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah. There it is, 10 points. You're right. OK, so only Beijing is added at the end, then. Yes, Beijing and the travel bonus cards are um, added in the end. Well, and maybe, yes, and the majority for the contracts, of course, because you, you don't know it before. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks for clarifying. So yellow, Sport R, as you said, you don't think he's, there's much that he can do in this position. What's the, well, how can he optimize and squeeze just a few points here? Well, I think the only. Oh, no, he cannot take contracts anymore because uh, he doesn't have a black die and he already was there. Yeah. I think he cannot do anything at all. He can just take money for one point at well, the yeah. end. Yeah, he needs to get to 10 coins to get one point. Is it? Yes. So that's easy. Well, he can also go to Lanzu and take nine money there, which, yes, okay, which is also one point. It doesn't matter a lot. <laughs> And he still will have an even number, um, the two silks, which will come down to one victory point through Beijing. Yep. OK. Yes, and um, with with yes, he cannot take camels as well, because otherwise Karachi would have been an interesting count, which still generates at least a few points. Oh, yes. But he doesn't have enough camels, so. Well. He's only taking camels. So really, yes, OK. So, so I guess. Or I can't do anything in the next move, basically. Indeed, yeah. Wow. She will just take money. Yes. Or <laughs> for zero points, yeah. <laughs> OK, Monsoon. OK, what's about Monsoon? He can fulfill this contract, obviously, but he thinks about where to generate even more points. Yeah. But I think he, do you see it? Um, no, he cannot take contracts as well. I think everybody is already was there yeah so this was it okay so now it's obviously game king won the majority of the contracts easily that's right nobody can take any more contracts game king is 
at seven. So no, but even before, even without fulfilling contracts, which he will, he's going to win. So yeah, it's a, it's a great position to be in. And, uh, and obviously he'll take five, five victory points um, here. So yeah. by the way, is it worth perhaps using two camels here? It probably is to upgrade this to a six and to take an extra victory point, perhaps. I think he needs the camels to, um, although yes, he needs the camels to fulfill the contracts. But uh, yeah, he doesn't he have can take for more camels because he doesn't, he doesn't need the money, I think. Yeah. So yes, probably he will do this unless there's anything else. Maybe, for him. Like we said, maybe you're saying he might take some camels unless there's something better for him, just so he can upgrade the die and get an extra victory point. But he can get an extra victory point even just by you know getting the three coins or you know that also. Yes, yes, that's true. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't make any difference. No. Okay, so I think Game King will win this game. Um, he's at. 56, 63 for the contract, 73 in Beijing, and um, yes, uh, six more points of, of me from Sumatra, so 79. Well, and probably he has fulfilled at least one of the contract cards, so I would calculate with, let's say, 12 points from the contract, from the travel bonus cards. This makes something around 90, 93. That's a lot. It's a very high score. Very <laughs> high score. Okay, well, that's a natural move. He was going to do that anyway. Yeah. Uh, I guess you can think about where he wants to get that extra victory point for <laughs> the last move. <laughs> yeah, really seems like he didn't find anything as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because otherwise you might have gone for it uh, to prevent someone else from taking it. Although, again, nothing's going anywhere at this point. <laughs> So sport R, what? Yeah, how is he going to get? Uh, we said he, you don't think he can generate another victory point here. No. Yeah, he's just taking money for zero points. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So last action now. For, no, one, two more actions. One for Monsoon and one for Game King. So I would say that Game King will win the game. Pandemonium will be second as, as it seems. Now he's re and Look at that. He's re-rolled. Uh, he's gotten a six. <laughs> camels. Okay. What does he want to do with the camels? Oh, Sport R is already okay. caught. Yeah. <laughs> he knows what's up. So Game King <laughs> takes some coins in order to get the, yeah, the 10 points, which is another victory point. Oh, no, you found something else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that? No idea. <laughs> Maybe he's taking, no, it doesn't make sense. Hmm. Oh, he's taking oh, I spices. See. Oh, yes, it's, indeed. It's one point more. Yeah. That's right. It's two. Very nice. I don't one. think it that's, does make any difference. <laughs> well, he's going to win anyway, but that's much better, obviously. Yes. Good call. Because uh, he's going to get two victory points because he now has an even number. Uh, that's two victory points. Wow. Okay. Ah, yeah. Monsoon found uh, still eight points in Moscow. Indeed, I forgot about those. Oh, this could be the third place for him. Oh wow. Let's see. Okay. Yes, it is. Wow. Um. Congrats. Thank you. Invite. Into. It's <laughs> on everyone. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is if you, I'll let you Ilya, talk for, if you can just hold the fort for a second, I'm going to spotlight you while I get Game King in. So you, if you can tell us what you think of the game and I'm going to send an invite in the, in the meantime to, uh, to Game King. Yeah, okay. It was a really interesting game, I think. Um, I would have imagined that Sport R could have done a little bit better with this Samarkanda strategy, but somehow it didn't work out. I wanted to take another look on the um, on the contract cards. Let me see. Um, here they are. Okay. 
So Game King got 15 points out of his uh, travel bonus cards, which means right. probably he has fulfilled right. one of them. So hold on, I just want to uh, yeah. first let me welcome Ankush Kandelwal. Uh, Ankush, welcome, well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I can't quite believe I've won actually. So <laughs> congratulations, you Thank did you. great. Yeah, we're we're following your game, and we we thought that it was going to be close uh, at the beginning with uh, with Sport R because, uh, but then yeah, you you just played tremendously well, and Ilya was calling it quite early that you were going to finish it. Oh, nice. Yeah, actually, I think I had a very lucky draft this game, having Mikato with the other the other guys in the game. I think there was Burke and Rashid. So I think Mikato was strongly favoured in that lineup because, I mean, even this game, Burke gave me like a lot of leech, I like to call it, because they, they take lots of camels from the market. So I get lots of extra economy throughout the game. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's right, because that's what Burke has to do, right, in order to... To use, uh, um, yeah, to be able to take those camels for free and, and get the extra dice. So it's, it, he played well into you, and also uh, Rashid was playing well for your character because he was blocking Khan's favor and sending people to the market. Um, sorry, say that back again. Oh, I'm saying that uh, Rashid, uh, who gets to choose his dice, was, was blocking Khan's favor. Oh yeah, that's what Rashid often does. So I found in like the Rashid and Burke game like that. Because Burke likes to go for extra dice, and then Rashid blocks the, the spot for the extra dice. So I don't think that dynamic works out well for them. So tremendous, uh, so, yeah, tremendous play. Obviously, a great choice from the beginning of the game. Did you hesitate at all in terms of choosing uh, the Mercator? I wanted to just uh, sort of review my options, um, but yeah, I, I was pretty sure I was going to take Mercator. Amazing. So I want to share, hold on, I just want to share the screen here for a sec so everybody can see um, the final score here. <laughs> so so here we are, and uh, obviously 95 points, uh, you got uh, uh, you got the, the most contracts, which uh, was uh, uh, worth seven points, and we saw that you were winning that race. Were you nervous at all at the end when there was a little bit of a race for, for contracts? No, I mean, not really, because I, I I built my game plan up so that I had the nice actions at Sumatra, so I'd always have a lot of flexibility and resources to get from there. And then with me being the Mercator as well, like, no one can really block me on the market because I get a resource from that. So I always felt comfortable I'd be able to complete my, um, what are they called? The, the most contract points. Yeah, contracts. Um, so yeah, I've, I've never actually scored 95. I only started really training for this two days ago. And um, yeah, I went really intense on the training. So uh, I think I got quite lucky this tournament. I made some errors along the way, but they didn't cost in the crucial time and then I peaked the right time. It seems. Amazing, really, truly amazing uh, play. Indeed, uh, Pandemonium was closest to you. And uh, uh, but still, I mean, that, that's a 20 point difference. You got to Beijing first. That was big, obviously, and uh, yeah. You, and in terms of your your city goals, it looks like you 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 did. Was it three out of uh, out of the four? No, I did all four. I had a duplication one. I know that with the Mercado, it's quite kind of hard to travel the whole board. So uh -huh. I don't like to go for four unique ones. I like to go for three ones. And I saw plan my route out, and I saw Sumatra might have some nice. Um, actions for me, um, especially like the contract one could be like five or six points uh, at the end of the game, and then the two special city actions. So it seemed like a nice spot to go for, especially when there's two gold on it as well. So I kind of built my game plan up to try and take that route, and I'm happy at the way it turned out, I guess. That's cool. So, so you had Sumatra, and what were the other cities that you, you needed to? I didn't have Sumatra. I had uh, I had Karakor. Um, Zian and Kochi. Okay. So what's it? What, um, wow. Okay. But you just you knew that you wanted to get to Sumatra. Let me just show you, by the way, the standings going in. As you said, you you were in third place going in. Obviously, whoever wins the final table takes gold. Um, so you really um, you, you you certainly came from behind to take it. And and as you said, in round three. 
you were second place. So th is that where you felt that you hadn't optimized was the third round? Um, no, actually, not so much the third round. Like the first round, I made a pretty severe error in the end game because I'm not so experienced in the end game. And mm -hmm. it was kind of hard to like know which resources to go for. And I found it tough in the time pressure. So I made like maybe an 11 point error, but I was still ahead uh, by enough that I managed to hold on. And my second game, I definitely made, yeah, second and third game, I, I know I made some like small, like maybe tactical inefficiencies, but I really feel in the last game we just played, uh, yeah, I feel like it was the best game I've played so far. I don't think there was much else I'd have done differently. But maybe you disagree. Like, what did you think anything watching the game? Like, did you disagree with any of my moves? Well, yeah. What, what do you think? Yeah, actually, I don't remember if you if I saw any mistakes uh, for in your game. Um, I think there were some mistakes from um, from the other players, which we discussed. I want to. I want to. Like, by the way, I just want to just mention. We come back to that. How is this going to affect? Obviously, you've now won first place. It's probably you're probably going to get a score that's going to replace your liar's dice with Perugia's score, uh, and even improve your pentamine standing, I believe. Yeah, I think that will put me. That will probably get like an, a score around ninety-seven-ish, I would think, um, mm -hmm. maybe slightly more. I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's still possible for some of the others others to catch me. So it's, it's still not over, and I'm playing a Gritler tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes. Against a very strong field, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an insanely strong field, so I'm really looking forward to that. Let me hold on, let me spotlight you. Um, so, yeah, so I just want to say, first of all, congratulations again. That's a tremendous victory. Uh, Marco Polo, such a hard game, such an asymmetric game, right, where every character affects the other character. So much strategy. Um, you know, it's uh, very different from from two-player games, you know, what, yeah, do you, is, is there a game that you like that you would say, a preference, or do you like all games? Um, I'm not sure, yeah, I like all games, I'd say. I'd say maybe some of the abstracts I find a little more challenging, but if I set my mind to it, I think I, I could be able to compete. But I think, yeah, I do enjoy these Euros. Um, this game actually felt a little bit like Terra Mystica when I was uh, sort of learning it, because it's kind of like early game, you try and build your economy, and then late game, you're trying to maximize your VPs and um, you try and, yeah, and then there's like the player interaction on the board. So that's what it felt like when I was playing it. And um, yeah, I did quite a lot of research on the different characters and the interactions and I find the dynamics really interesting. But I know Mike suggested an auction um, mechanic could be interesting. And yeah, I think, I think he's right. I think auctions make a lot of games more fair. Some people, like if you're fourth pick, let's say first position and fourth pick on two of the weaker characters, it can seem a little unfair, so. Yeah, that is tough. What, what do you think of that, Ilya? Um, yes, we played kind of a variant of this at the Europe Masters, I think three years ago or so. Um, they they chose an, a, diff a different strategy that you, you're able to combine the character you pick with the starting contract and um, so that the first one to pick the character, I guess, um, was is the last one to um, to get a starting contract, something like this, and this makes a little bit of a difference as well. I think you had a great advantage at the beginning because you were the Mercator, so you had the first pick and you got the best contract with the extra travel step. Oh yeah, that was really nice. Yeah, this was that's very valuable. So you were an easily you could you could go to Anxi easily, and uh, this is a great beginning. And, and you're lucky that nobody got went to Moscow before you and took the bonus. Yes, indeed. These were f five extra coins, which I couldn't imagine you would get them. I don't think the other it was really any other characters that I'm able to go for it so early because they usually um, don't have enough camels or coins. I'm not sure. I think some well, of them usually just. Sorry, Karen. Sorry. Uh, usually there's one character which uh, tra uh, who travels in the first. In turn at least one character mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. usually he will go to Moscow and grab the five coins but in this game I think it was um, Monsoon and um, he got to Anxi direct no it was Pandemonium and he yeah. got to Anxi directly skipping Moscow and this was of course very good for you yes 
Um, yeah, I find it tricky to know whether to go for like Moscow or Anxi, and it's I find that a really interesting decision. And I think I've lost more games by not going to Anxi because having that early game economy tile can really help you later on. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And also, Anxi was was it four steps away from Beijing, or I forget, is that right? Or yeah, it's four steps away. Which is the most efficient, obviously, because it costs you as much as three steps. Right? Yes, but I had one of my um, objectives on Karakorum. Right. So I had to go there next. But I was fortunate I had, had a nice dice roll, actually, because I had a 6-6-5, six, six, and I could use the triple gold plus one movement. So, um, Oh, yes, yes. That was very lucky when you used it on the gold. Uh, yeah. That's right. And... You saw that, uh, I think it was Monsen, he was a little bit unlucky in the second round with his dice roll. Uh, with Burka Khan having low dice, that really hurt him. Yeah, I think it can really damage Burka. I think in some cases having a low dice roll is advantageous because you get the camel um, compensation. And you, sometimes you don't even want the big numbers, but maybe the times that happened to him really damaged him. So it was quite unfortunate for him. Well, that, that really, that, that's when Ilya was basically counting Monsen out of the out of the race for first place once that happened. Right. Uh, but uh, so tremendous. Uh, so what uh, what lies ahead? What are you going to do tonight? Uh, are you going to relax? Are you going to practice Agricola? What what what, what is you know what does a champion like yourself do the night uh, after? First of all, like, you know, a glorious victory such as this. Yeah, I'm definitely going to train some Agricola. Um, I I had sort of planned uh, a practice game with some friends, but that was if we didn't make the final. So. We'll see if there's still up for it. Cool. But yeah, I've not played Agricola this whole month because I've been studying so many other games. So, But it, throughout the year, I have played a decent amount. So I, I still feel like quite confident about my game. I know there's going to be some experts playing. So um, yeah, it's going to be a real challenge. Experts is, to put it mildly, masters, I would say. Sure. To be, to be, perhaps, but yes, I would say as well. Uh, um, but yeah. For the record, Ankush, uh, who is the uh, the current Pentamine World Champion, last year going into the final round, he was actually behind in the Pentamine standings and won Agricola in order to uh, to seal the deal. Is that right? Yeah, I needed. I think I needed to come first, second, or third to to win the Pentamine. And I think I was like, I, if I was to price myself, I'd say I was like a three to one underdog to do that. But I had such a nice deal that day. Um, yeah, like just the perfect cards, especially in the finals. So, uh, like when you get dealt such a great game, you've got to capitalize on it. And I was able to do. Ilya, are you playing Agricola tomorrow as well? Yes, I think so. I wanted to play, but I don't think I can compete in Agricola for the first places. I'm not that good there. So actually, I thought I could be better in Marco Polo, but well, it turned out I was just just average this time. So I want. I have to take a look. What? Uh, how many points? What are got from this tournament? So probably he has um, now more points than me in the Euro Games um, Championship. Let's take a look. Uh, so we had here. Ilya is kind of leading the, uh, the Euro Games World Championship, but uh, Ricardo was at the final table, and was he Sport R? Is that? Uh... Yes, but he he got fourth, which is. Quite good for me, but maybe not good enough. <laughs> I see. I think that would give him about 88 points, which would increase his score by 15, putting on about 4-4-3. Um, yeah. I actually joined this party as well, because my I was in position number 5, and I'm going to get like a 97 or yeah, so. So, good. So, so I think uh, Ricardo is going to be leading, if I've got the maths correct. And I'll be second just behind. Wow. Nice. Hmm. Well, that's very exciting. So, you know, obviously uh, it would be nice to get uh, an additional uh, accolade while you're at it, right? Uh, so for both of you, first I want to wish you both good luck because this is going to be obviously very exciting tomorrow. Um, very, very exciting. I will I will mention, hold on, let's turn, let's turn this off. Um, I'll just show, whoops, 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 hold on. <laughs> it's hard to be the operator and, and commentator sometimes. But uh, let me just show, 
this is uh, this is you get another one of these handcuffs for today. So I think I actually with this gold medal, I I become top of the list of all time. I think I just overtake Taylor Swift. Okay, we're we're going to take a look at that in a second. My uh, my three year old daughter refers to these as big hanging coins. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another another big hanging coin. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at where the um, um, what the the overall uh, standings are for all time because that is something that we do publish as well. So here we go. I'm going to turn this on and take a look. And indeed, here we are. So uh, at the moment, you're already tied with gold, but uh, uh, on tie break, uh, we hit silver and then bronze. So David Pierce leads, but with this gold medal, you will be moving into uh, first place. Uh, in the all times label. So, uh, you, that, actually, this is quite a, a historic day, Ankush. Wow. Uh, so, big congratulations on that. Obviously, this will be updated uh, by tomorrow morning, and uh, and that will show. That's, uh, does that, what, what does that mean to you, Ankush? Yeah, I mean, thank you. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite an honor to be at the top of the list now when there's so many great champions on that board. So, I'm very happy with that. Tremendous champions. Uh, Truly, truly, truly great, great players. Obviously, David Pierce, a great, great player. He took a silver medal yesterday, actually, in uh, uh, Circle of Life, which is quite a, quite a cool, quite a cool game. And obviously, Andres, uh, your fiercest competitor uh, alongside James over the last few years. So, uh, you know, very, very exciting. Um, cool. Well, once again, a, a, a massive congratulations, Anka. It was a real pleasure to watch you guys. You, everybody played so strongly and so fast. Uh, clearly, you guys uh, were in your element today, and uh, it was just really, just just really great fun to watch. I wasn't expecting to stream it, but uh, then I, I got very excited, decided at the last minute. And Ilya was very generous to jump in and join, and he's a he's a far stronger Marco Polo player than I am. So <laughs> oh, it was really a pleasure. Well, I'm curious, what are your? I, I know you've already won like two of the Euro game competitions. Which are your strongest Euro games? <laughs> um, difficult to say. I, actually, I think Marco Polo should be one of my strongest ones because I played it so often at various tournaments. And um, well, I I didn't do very well this time, although it was very close in the uh, in most of the games. Um, Stone Age is certainly one of my other strong games, which I also won, but I was very lucky there. And well, what are the? I think the, this should be the two strongest in this Mind Sports Olympiad. And well, apart from that, I'm not sure. Um, maybe something like Istanbul is um, quite good as well. Um, let me think. Mm. You, you won Carcassonne, obviously. Yes, I won Carcassonne, but it was well. I don't know. I I never played for player Carcassonne actually, so it <laughs> it was also more luck than anything else that I won <laughs> won this tournament. Um, I think I'm better to play a Carcassonne actually, but I didn't play this one because um, I had to take care of my family on this day. Mm. Um, yeah, so and you, you could I regularly play at the German um, German Championship. Um, there's a so-called um, yes, there's a big tournament for teams in Germany. And you can qualify for a Europe Masters. I'm not sure if you're, um, if you know that. So, so Ankush actually played in the Europe Masters uh, with me on a team a few years ago. Was Marco? Ah, I see. Was that one of the games, Ankush? No, it wasn't. No, I think. Oh, the, do you remember the games that year? Oh gosh, I think one was <laughs> uh, Great Western Trail, Honshu. Yeah. Ah, I see. First class. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, uh, wasn't there like a, a, Automata or something? Some card game, or was it something different? I don't even remember what it was. Oh, was it Shakespeare or something? Yeah, yeah. It was Shakespeare. I, I, I think it was. Uh, it really rings a bell. I can't. I can't remember. Shakespeare should be should have been another year because I played Shakespeare at the Europe Masters, but I didn't play Great Western Trail and Honshu. This was in another year where we didn't qualify. Ah, I know what it was. It was the it was the uh, the, the 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 card version of Castles of Burgundy. Uh, oh. I think right. Uh, what you know, I'm talking about. I don't think so because oh, no, I played this one as well. It should oh. be in the same year as, as Shakespeare. Well, I can look up actually. 
look it up. But I was I was aware of the German Championships because um, I think from 2017 they posted a lot of stats on Marco Polo on Board Game Geek. Yes, <laughs> I was looking at all those stats and looking at the different strategies. Ah, I see. So you're prepared. Uh, very good. Uh, it had uh, Mercato as the strongest card, but I'm not convinced. I think in like an intermediate to uh, maybe like advanced field, like Mercato is going to perform very well. But I think um, with the elite players, I, I think the travel strategies are really quite interesting. But again, I'm not very experienced, so that's just my opinion on the place. Which, which, which uh, character would you use for travel then? Uh, you can use both Wilhelm or uh, Nicolo. I think yeah. they're both interesting depending on the board. Yeah. And it was quite a challenge to like learn what to look for on a board to see which strategy would be good, but I'm getting better at that. Amazing. Uh, wow. So what did you see in this board that made you want to keep it simple, I guess? I mean, if there's um, Burkham, Rashid, and Mateo, then Makato is already very good. So having like one of them makes Makato okay. Having two is just incredible. So, okay. So regardless of the board, you knew that the characters would, would prime you for a good uh, a good game. Yeah, for sure. Um, and actually, while I'm here, I'd like to give a shout out to Vesta for helping me train because uh, I messaged him yesterday or the day before saying, um, do you want to do some prep for Marco Polo? Because he played a little bit more than I have. So yeah, the training session helps. So thank you for that. <laughs> it clearly has. And you're, you're, you're a quick learner as well, a quick study. So I've actually learned a lot from training with Jordi. Like he, he, um, he learns games so fast. It's, it's really incredible. Like, oh. uh, yeah, his level of work ethic and his, how quick he gets the master is really something special. So. I think I've learned a few things from him. Maybe that, that's Jordi Alexander, who is yes. uh, also uh, at the top of the, uh, the Pentamind uh, race and is playing uh, Twilight Struggle today, I believe. Uh, yeah, I know that's one of his favorite games and also Joe's, uh, Joe Mellers. Yes. So I think if Joe wins that, he, I mean, he's going to have an incredible score. Uh, I mean, same with Jordi. I don't know exactly what scores they need to overtake me, but... Let's see what happens. Super exciting. Well, we're gonna we're gonna watch out. Uh, we, we, you know, the suspense until the end. And uh, want to wish you good luck going into tomorrow. Enjoy yourself tonight. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been great. It's been great to watch you, and you're you're a great champion, Akish. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Cool.